Cedar Point, one of the largest amusement parks in the world. Thrilling riders for 150 years. Let's take a blast to the past and see how this park became what it is today. Back in 1870, Cedar Point was just a beach. If it weren't for this beach and Lake Erie, Cedar Point would not be where it is now. A Sandusky, Ohio businessman named Louise Estelle brought, brought guests to the beach on a boat. This boat, called the Young Reindeer, brought guests across the Sandusky Bay. There was a bathhouse where people could change to go swim in Lake Erie on the peninsula. Other boats then started making the trip to Cedar Point. Guests of the peninsula could picnic in the woods and flatlands. This is what attracted the first guests to the Cedar Point Peninsula. Not to be outdone by other competitors, Cedar Point owners built a massive resort structure in 1888. This structure is called the Grand Pavilion. More attractions started to pop up on the beach. One of these attractions was the Switchback Railway, Cedar Point's first roller coaster. The Switchback Railway was 25 feet tall and 10 miles per hour. Back in 1892, these speeds and height were insane. An Indiana businessman named George Bentley pr promoted Cedar Point and turned the park from picnic grounds to a show place. Cedar Point kept upgrading. Bentley thought that if guests at Cedar Point stayed longer, the better Cedar Point would be. This led to Cedar Point's first hotel called the White House. The hotel was built in 1901 on Cedar Point's shore. In 1902, Cedar Point's second roller coaster was built on the beach. The three-way figure eight roller toboggan was the biggest ride at the park. There was also a water toboggan that ended in Lake Erie. Just west of the pavilion, an opera house was built in 1903. In 1905, Cedar Point was building another hotel. This hotel, known as Hotel Bro Breakers, is still alive and well today. This hotel was recently expanded in 2018. In 1906, Cedar Point got its real mid its first real midway. The midway was full of popular attractions. The massive Coliseum was also on this midway. The top floor was used as a ballroom. Bentley built a new dock for bigger ships that didn't need to stop in Sandusky. The amusement circle off the midway saw new attractions, including a roller coaster called the Scenic Railway. This 4,200 foot long attraction was extremely popular. In 1910, Cedar Point unleashed the largest bathhouse in the world. For this to be built, the three-way figure eight roller toboggan had to be moved. It was moved down the beach and was renamed the Racer. Also, the longest plane flight over water record was set at Cedar Point, 63 miles over Lake Erie. The Leap the Dip Scenic Railway is where Blue Streak sits today. This roller coaster was built in 1912. In 1914, the Cedar Point Road opened so vehicles could finally drive to the resort. In 1918, the Scenic Railway was renovated to the Leapfrog Railway and was 70 feet tall. In 1924, Cedar Point opened its first kiddie land. In 1925, Helen Keller gave a speech at Cedar Point. In 1929, Cedar Point's best coaster, called Cyclone, opened. This coaster replaced the racer. Cedar Point would not add many new rides in the coming years due to the Great Depression and George Bentley's death. The Leapfrog was renovated in 1934 and was renamed High Frolics. With little money, Cedar Point struggled. In the 1940s, the big bands in Cedar Point's ballroom kept Cedar Point alive and well. During World War II, travel to Cedar Point was limited. Cedar Point wouldn't have survived if it weren't for the Sandusky residents. At the beginning of the decade, Cedar Point had only one coaster, the Cyclone. However, Cedar Point also had many flat rides. In 1951, Cedar Point tore down the Cyclone roller coaster. Two real estate an agents bought the peninsula in, 19 in the 1950s to turn it into a housing de development. Cedar Point's lease as an amusement park did not end until 1959, so the two real estate agents studied the operations of the park. They added a new causeway from Sandusky straight to the peninsula. They also added a new marina. Finally, a new roller coaster called the Wild Mouse opened. The new management team decided that the amusement park should stick around. So that the dirt midway was paved, the rotor, sky wheel, and sky ride opened in the early 60s. And in 1963, the CPNLE Railroad opened to the public. The same year, the mill race opened. 1964 saw the debut of C Cedar Point's oldest operating coaster, the Blue Streak. 
this ride is extremely famous and it sits right on the lake. It's right at the entrance of the park and Blue Streak is one of the one of the best rides in the park. The rest of the 60s introduced Space Spiral, Jungle Larry, Cedar Creek Mine Ride, Frontier Town, and the Sky Ride that connected the main midway with Frontier Town. The 1970s saw multiple thrilling coasters including Jumbo Jet, Corkscrew, Wildcat, and Gemini. Corkscrew was originally gonna named, be named the Great Lake Erie Roller, but it was renamed Corkscrew. Corkscrew was the first roller coaster to invert three times. Gemini, on the other hand, had a bit of a troubled start. The ride was late with construction due to a blizzard, and on opening day, the blue train valley. According to John Hildebrandt, Gemini was a di disappointment. It was supposed to be like how the beast turned out, but it did not turn out this way. The 80s brought even more to Cedar Point, including Demon Drop, Iron Dragon, Avalanche Run, Silk City, and Magnum XL 200. Magnum was the first hyper coaster, and it was also the tallest and fastest roller coaster. Cedar Point kept breaking records with Raptor, Mantis, and Mean Streak. Then, Cedar Point went above and beyond. Millennium Force debuted as the first Giga Coaster in 2000. The ride proved coasters could be insane. This is what Cedar Point. This is what made Cedar Point the coaster capital of the world. Cedar Point and Intamin kept working on screen machines with Wicked Twister, Maverick, and Top Thrill Dragster. Top Thrill Dragster was the first strata coaster. Over, it was the tallest and fastest roller coaster in the world, and it was the first coaster to break 400 feet that was a full circuit ride. All of these rides debuted in the 2000s. After a seven year coaster drought with Dinosaurs Alive and other attractions, Cedar Point started working with Bulliger and Mabillard, a Swiss roller coaster manufacturer. To build Gatekeeper, Rougarou, and Valraven, Cedar Point worked with B&M. Cedar Point upgraded the Gemini Midway as well, including Pipe Scream and Camp Snoopy improvements. In 2018, Steel Vengeance, often considered the best coaster in the world, debuted. This RMC was the tallest and fastest hybrid coaster ever. Cedar Point was definitely a coaster park, but now Cedar Point is going down the Disney path. Cedar Point introduced Forbidden Frontier, an interactive attraction like an escape room in 2019. Also, Cedar Point is getting crowds like never before because of their new Gold Pass debuting in 2019. This year, in 2020, Cedar Point's 150th anniversary, they are upgrading their food, adding a new family boat ride, and getting some blasts to the past. These blasts to the past include the juice bottles and the old timey shows. Hopefully Cedar Point can do this for another 100 years. Nice job Cedar Point, congrats on 150 years. A lot of people are questioning Cedar Point's future, whether they are going to stick with the big thrilling coasters or go down the theming and Disney route. I personally want to see some big thrilling coasters with a little bit of theming in there. Maybe some dueling GCIs or an indoor spinning coaster. So guys, thank you so much for watching. This took a lot of time and effort and this is one of my biggest videos yet. Probably not my biggest, but one of my biggest videos and I really appreciate you watching this video. And roll the outro!